Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. Pardon the respirator, I'm currently printing DTF transfers in the back, and yes, it is that serious. Make sure you are wearing a respirator when you are making DTFs. When that powder substance goes into the oven, the fumes that it creates, um, I don't think you should be breathing that. So just, yeah, better safe than sorry. All right, um, real quick before we start today's video and go into the production of what I'm making today, want to talk to you guys about your customers, right? When you get a customer and the customer asks you to produce one thing, I think a lot of people produce that, produces that one thing and then they give it to the customer and let the customer um, just go about their business until the customer comes back and requests something else. Um, I want to encourage you guys to go above and beyond for your customers and don't just um, when your customer requests that you make something, right? Make that thing, fulfill that order for them, but look at that thing and think of what else your customer might want. Like, you know, if they did a shirt and it had something on the left chest, take that design. If you have an embroidery machine, why not make them one sample of something that you think would complement that shirt good? Or if they got hats done, vice versa, why not make them a shirt, one sample, of something that would complement that hat, right? Or, you know, make a variation of the color of the design and give them one sample. Most likely if you do these things, there's a high probability that if you did it right, your customer might request that specific item or that might be something that your customer had in mind of making next. And since you went ahead and produced one of them, they might give you the go ahead give you the cash, and you can go ahead and start moving forward with that specific thing. Now, this design that I'm going to digitize and produce on the embroidery machine today is a design that I um, came up with with my customer, told me what he wanted, I created the image, it's a simple image, and we want to go ahead and put it on some hats for him. We already made the shirts some time ago, now we're going to go ahead and put the hats together for him, all right? so. Make sure you are offering your clients more, and it's, I think that this is called upselling, upselling, right? So make sure you are offering your clients a little bit more than what they want, you know? They appreciate it. And worse come worse, um, if you don't get the business now, you'll most likely get it later. Um, there hasn't been a time I, I can think of where I, didn't, I, I created something for a customer that they didn't think was a great idea. And that's the thing. They, you know, you have the creative mind. So, you know, most likely the thing that you're going to come up with is going to be a great idea for your customer. So make sure you guys are upselling and thinking of ways and thinking of uh, different items that might improve your customer's apparel or your customer's brand or that thing, whatever it is that you're making or whatever it is that you're making for them. Maybe it might be uniform. Make a complimentary item, include it in the package, and... Maybe you'll get some more business like that. All right, guys, we got Chroma Lux open. Make sure you guys um, download the new version of Chroma Lux too. We got some features in here that simplify a few things. Um, pretty interesting. I'm not gonna go over them right now, but I see some new features. But I gotta play. I haven't played with it yet. So to import artwork, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna click right here. Uh, I'm gonna select right. And it's going to open up my browser. I'm going to go to Documents. I know exactly where my thing is. It's in a folder called Kelly. Right here. Boom. And I'm going to grab one of these. JPEG. It does, it's not really going to matter. I'm just going to grab the JPEG right here. And what I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to scale it to the size that I want it to be. Now, when you're doing this, you can use the ruler tool in Chrome Lux right here. All right. So there's a ruler tool right here. And I know I'm putting on a hat, so I want it to be maximum, I think, about 2.3 inches tall. All right, that's way bigger than that. So let me go ahead and grab this tool and uh, click back on your uh, backdrop tool. And then that's going to bring up the little dots on the sides, and you can go ahead and scale it down. Now, while I'm scaling down my image, you can look down here. As I'm scaling, look down here in the corner right over here in this area right here, bottom left, right? As I scale down, you can see the size of the height. 
and that can give you an idea of the size of the image. All right, so I said I wanted it to be about 2.3 inches tall, okay? So that's good. Now I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna position it. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna go ahead and do a rough measure and that looks about right. All right, so now I can start digitizing this. Obviously, I'm gonna digitize what's easy first, which is the text, and then we'll, we'll fill in the, the rest of the stuff right here. All right, this is not a digitizing tutorial, but I'm gonna show you guys, oh, wow, is it singing? I'm gonna show you guys a, um, a few little tools right here. I'm gonna grab my text tool right here. I'm gonna click over here. I'm gonna shrink it down to something that looks more like that size. Let's, let's say uh, 60. Okay, put that right here. That looks pretty okay. Let's say 58. All right, and I'm gonna change this text to G, capital G, R, and then eight, apply. That's perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and click to the realistic view tool. And there's that. I'm gonna switch the color to black. And there we have that right there. Um, what I'm gonna do to change my text so far is I'm gonna change the density because I want it to be, see how it's like got those ragged rag, lines uh, on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna increase the density to about 32. All right, it's gonna make it nice and dense. I might increase it a little bit. And I'm gonna change the stitch, stitch length actually to 2.8. So I can make these stitches a little tighter, 2.5 actually. And what that does is that pulls the stitches in so that you can see the letters a little bit better. You can't see it on here on the uh, realistic view, but it does make a world of a difference when it's embroidering. All right, now I'm gonna take the back, instead of a parallel um, underlay, I'm gonna turn that off and I'm just gonna put a center line for the underlay for this. And I'm gonna repeat the process for all the other ones also. Okay, so boom. All right, I'll be right back to do all that stuff. Another thing that I like to do with my text right here is I like to go ahead and um, go out to this tab right here, the commands tab, and I wanna trim on the trims right here, where it says longer than, I like to make it um, characters, all right? So that means it's gonna trim between characters. It's gonna embroider F, it's gonna trim, embroider I, trim, embroider G, trim, so on and so forth, all right? Trim between characters. I do that to all of my text. It makes it a lot cleaner, and when you're embroidering, when your machine's embroidering, it makes it way less clean up, all right? And I and C, gonna put that down like 30, make that text real small. Down here, maybe even smaller. Um, all right, now I'm done digitizing the text. Looks pretty fine to me. I can manually digitize it if I don't like the way it looks or I can change the text if I don't like the way it looks when I embroidered it the first time. But now let's embroider the figures. It's relatively easy. I'm just gonna do a, a series of shapes and um, use uh, zigzag stitches and satin stitches and tatami stitches to do this to kind of like give it a better effect. I could just go with a straight um, tatami stitch for the whole thing, but I don't wanna do that because you create more levels and more versatility and it just looks better if you, if you you know, use um, satin stitches with the Tommy stitches with zig with uh, zigzag stitches and stuff like that. Um, it just looks better. All right, so I'm gonna work from the outside in because typically your clothes are on top of you. So I'm gonna do a zigzag. Then we're gonna do a satin right here for the arm. Then we're gonna do another you know, another satin right here, go on, and then we'll, we'll do some, some weird, and then we'll go with a satin in another direction for right, this leg and that leg, and then we'll do the same. Then when we do all the outer parts, and then uh, satin, or I might do a fill right here, um, then I'm gonna do a fill for the whole body parts to connect everything together, all right? 
it's going to be really, really simple. So um, first, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab this cl classic uh, hmm, steel stitch. Uh, I can get, grab this classic satin it's right here and I can zoom all the way in and I can go ahead and start working on these stitches right here. All right, so I'm holding down command so I can get my zero, maybe my, my circle type of uh, edge right here. It's really, really easy to do this. Really, really simple. All right, I'm gonna come in just a little bit. All right, like that. Boom. All right, that part's done. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right. Boom. Doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to be perfect um, when you when you fine tune your digitizing. In the meantime, while I'm doing that, I simultaneously come back here and check on my DTFs. All right, got a nice loop. Turn on the shaker baker and keep it moving. All right. All right, now that we have our image digitized, we are going to go ahead and take it over to the embroider machine and embroider it out flat just to see what it looks like. If it embroidered out flat good, then you know how it's supposed to embroider out when it's on a hat, all right? This design is only 7,119 stitches. Might make some, a few changes to it once it's embroidered. I don't know, we'll see. This is the first time I'm running it, but. Overall, I think it looks real good. I added a zigzag stitch to the tatami, um, uh, and it makes it, it gives it an effect like the guy is like, like I'm looking at their backs and the guy's pointing at something. So I think that's pretty good. So uh, yeah, let's try to, now I'm gonna go ahead and hoop this hat up right here real easily, real quickly. And we're gonna go ahead and embroider our first hat right here. Let me. Get that bottom part opened up. Hoop this hat up. Nice and easy. Get that sweatband out. Put that on there. I want to see how I hoop my hat. So I hoop my hat just like this. Put this part under here. Hold it. Put that part under there. Hold it. Hold the bottom part. All right. Line that up slightly over to the left so that when I bring the strap over right here, which bites into everything and goes right across on that line, lock that in there. All right, almost ready to go. Let me change this over, unlock that, change it over to the hat hoop right here. All right, boom, got the hat hoop. Got some bobbin thread in there, I'm good to go. And put that hat up in there. Position my design. All right, put this on needle number one right here. Position my design in the center of the hat, right there. Boom, that's good. Now let me up a little bit. All right, now let me trace this bad boy. Trace it out, lock that in. See where this thing is going to embroider out. Okay, 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 okay. I like the way that's looking right there. I like the way that's looking right there. Okay, it's gonna be there more specific to be specific. All right, I like that. I like that, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. It's looking so magnificent, all right? Now let's go ahead and embroider this out. Just gonna press start on our machine. And let's see how this goes. Here we go. All right, guys, I'm not sure if you knew already, but if you didn't know, I'm gonna tell you now. From now on, moving forward, when you use my Recoma affiliate link to purchase your multi-needle embroider machine, you get a free video FaceTime one hour consultation with me. All you gotta do is use my Recoma affiliate link. Make sure when you're talking to your sales associate, they know that the purchase is linked to me. And after you get your machine, do your consultation with Recoma, your online consultation. I mean, your online uh, familiarization, setup and everything with Recoma. Then after you do that, you email me at a.productions at gmail.com. Give me your name and your phone number you used when you purchased your embroidery machine. 
I'll verify it through a coma, and then we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime video consultation so I can get you guys up and running and give you guys all the tips and the tricks up close and personal that Recoma does not tell you. You get one hour with me, FaceTime consultation, so I can give you all the ins and outs that I use to get my Recoma machines running like a champion. So, if you're in the market to purchase an embroidery machine, a multi meter embroidery machine, use my Recoma affiliate link down in the description below and purchase yours today. You see the design, guys. Did it all the way through. No thread breaks, no nothing. You saw it digitized. You heard the concept. You heard the theory. You heard me talk about it. The customer requested it after I suggested it. So I got more business because of it. And as the result of me getting more business, I got to do a bunch more of these hats because, hey, you can't suggest it if you're not going to do it. So now I suggested it. He likes it. Now I'm going to do it. Let's take a look at this hat right here. All done. All the way through. Off the thing right here. So we can check out our progress that went from our brains to the computer. And we manifested it. And now it's in our hands. All right, let's check this thing out. Snap back back in. Let's look. Look at that. Look at that. What do you think, guys? What do you think? All right. Tell me how you feel about it. Comments down below. Let me know how you feel about it. I think the digitizing went great. I think we accomplished exactly what we wanted. Still see that finger right there. Very, very proud of that little small detail. I think it looks great. Now, guys, after you embroider your design and you look at it, you pretty much know if you're going to get new business or not, pretty much, before you show it to the client, you pretty much know if you're going to get new business or not. You know how you know because you look at your design, and if you're proud of what you did, then you know that your client's going to like it, all right? So if you're not proud of it, do it over, make some tweaks and peaks to adjust it. But I sent this picture to the client already. I haven't received a response yet because they're probably at work, but I know for a fact that I'm about to do a bunch more of these and I'm gonna have to order some more because of what he told me that he wanted. And I'm probably gonna have to do different colors also. And this is all from a suggestion, something that I suggested. All right, so um, don't forget to talk to your clients and as you're getting your clients orders, look at what you're doing, evaluate it and figure out how you can make your clients um, product better and offer additional products that you think that they might be interested in, whether it be a um, business or it be a clothing brand or, or maybe if it's something, a personal item, or maybe it's a family union something, maybe they might want hats to go along with everything, all right? So always try to upsell in order to get yourself some more business. Just an idea, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby? Like